On the 3rd of July 2022, a man opened fire at the Field Shopping Mall in Copenhagen in Denmark, killing three people. A Danish man was arrested after the shooting and he had a history of contact with the psychiatric healthcare system. According to police, the shooting was not an act of terrorism, so what led a man to shoot innocent people for seemingly no reason? This is the case of the Copenhagen Shopping Mall shooting. that have occurred in the Nordic countries. Some content warnings before we start this video. This video will include talks about mental health issues and suicide, so if that's something you don't feel comfortable watching, click out of this video right now. If you like my channel, please subscribe, and now let's get into the case that happened in Denmark. Field Shopping Mall is located on the outskirts of Copenhagen, just across from a subway line that connects the city center with the international airport. A major highway also runs to Fields Mall, which opened in 2004. Fields Shopping Mall is one of the biggest shopping malls in Scandinavia, and it has more than 140 shops and restaurants. On the 3rd of July 2022, innocent families and people of all ages were shopping or eating out as it was a very peaceful Sunday afternoon. That week, Denmark was hosting Tour de France 2022, which is a men's bicycle race usually held in France while also occasionally passing through nearby countries. The same day, hours later, Harry Styles was supposed to perform in Royal Arena located close by and many people were in the mall just waiting for the concert. Therefore, a lot of people were visiting Denmark and especially Copenhagen during this time. Sometime before 17.30 that Sunday, a man carrying a rifle and a knife had entered the mall. The gunman, dressed in a dark vest, shorts and boots, was strolling casually through the mall with his weapons and there is actually footage of this. The shooting started in the mall's movie theater and the shooter's plan was to help others away from this world. A witness said that the shooter seemed violent and angry, running around and shouting and swinging his rifle around his shoulders. When he was addressed by this witness, the shooter said that it is not real, meaning his rifle. This suggests that he was trying to trick people into believing that his weapon was fake to make them approach him. The man then suddenly started shooting straight into the crowd. Caught on video footage, the shooter then started walking across what seemed to be an upper floor balcony and then stopped for a few seconds directly in front of whoever was filming him, checking the chamber before throwing the rifle over his shoulder. After a few moments, the man took the rifle off his shoulder and began walking away to the right of the frame before breaking into a jog. The footage was then cut out. One shopper stated that he was in a clothing store with his family when he heard three to four bangs. <laughs> These were really loud bangs, so they thought that the shots were being fired straight outside of the store. Another shopper described hearing the gunshots and then running to the toilet to hide. This person had actually hidden in the mall for over two hours in the tiny toilet together with 11 other shoppers. Most people ran as fast as they could towards the exit signs, crying and panicking. Police received the first shooting reports at 1737 at Field Shopping Mall located in a developing area in Copenhagen. A huge police presence was on hand with several fire department vehicles and ambulances parked outside the shopping center along with police vans. The suspect was arrested by the police only 11 minutes after it was reported, so this means that the shooting only lasted for about 13 minutes. Here is a video of an eyewitness describing the chaos outside of the mall. For me, basically, I was uh, I was going to do some shopping and uh, decided to go to field small. Um, luckily, I had just uh, taken the later bus and uh, 
just when I was about to reach, uh, I heard some shots and uh, people started running out of the mall. What's uh, happening? And at that moment, I realized that there was uh, there was a shooting going on. Yeah, I'm allowed to film. So I turned around and started running as well, and uh, tried to find the, the first place to hide. I mean, people didn't really know where they were running. They they just even even when they were outside of the mall, they were running in different directions and trying to find uh, different routes and jumping over fences. It was quite chaotic. I mean, I saw I saw people who were presumably not even friends or that knew each other, and they just grabbed hands and ran together to any direction. And uh, people. Uh, lifting others up from the ground who were falling out of the shock. The policemen with uh, automatic weapons pointing at the driver, if I remember correctly, and then just shouting something and uh, telling him to open the door. And then this uh, one officer who seemed to be by his body language very nervous as well, which is understandable, taking into consideration the whole situation. Um, yeah, he just came in and told everyone in Danish to to put their hands up. As I'm born in Finland, it's um, I mean we don't take it for granted, but it's it's quite near of taking it for granted that that uh, safety is priority one, and it's not something that you have to really think about in your daily life. Um, so things like these are. Something that you would have, that you see in, in the news uh, all over the world and in movies, but uh, I I couldn't really have imagined uh, the day before that the next day, the mall that I was going to pretty much every day while visiting here uh, was going to be attacked by a uh, ill uh, gunman. That same evening, the police called a press conference. At the press conference, they announced that there were several dead and injured and encouraged those affected to contact relatives. So three people were actually killed in this shooting and four more were wounded by gunfire. The dead were a 17-year-old Danish girl, a 17-year-old Danish boy and a 47-year-old Russian man who was living in Denmark. They all died from bullet wounds and they have actually not been named in the media, so I was unable to tell their stories in this video. Which is sad because I always try to include the victims in the video, but in the Nordic countries they are often not named or then there is not that much information about them online. Another 23 people received minor injuries including three whose injuries were from stray gunfire with the additional 20 individuals injured in the evacuation. The four seriously wounded victims were two Swedish citizens and two Danish and it's unclear how they are doing today since it's almost a year after the incident. One of the Swedish people who actually survived was a girl called Sandra who was in the mall waiting for the Harry Styles concert. She was there with a friend and they were in a really good mood, they were gonna get something to eat when the shooting suddenly started. They suddenly saw people running and heard gunshots and soon Sandra was one of the people who ran in panic inside of the mall. When Sandra suddenly felt something warm in her back she realized that a bullet had hit her. She turned around and saw the gunman standing behind her with his gun, looking down the rolling stairs that she had just came down from. Sandra then managed to escape and hid in the toilet, unsure of what was happening outside. When the fire alarm came on, they just took a chance and ran out of the toilet and they managed to escape. Sandra actually still tried to get to the Harry Styles concert, but was stopped on the way there by people who saw her bleeding and called her an ambulance, and if this is not a true fan, then I don't know what is. Sandra has stated that the shooting will be forever in her memory, and when she heard that three people died, she felt it in her heart. So, in connection with the shooting, a 22-year-old Danish man was arrested, and this man was called Noah Espensen. Noah had a history of contact with the psychiatric healthcare system and from what I read online, he was suffering from schizophrenia and psychosis. 
Shortly before the shooting, actually on the same day as the attack, Noah uploaded videos to social media where he was posing with his gun pointed towards his head and stated that antipsychotic medication did not work. To be more precise, he actually wrote Ketapin does not work on music playlists titled Killer Music and Last Thing to Listen to, which he uploaded to YouTube. Ketapin is a medication used to treat mental health illnesses such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depression. It can also be used to treat drug addiction. And Noah's Instagram and YouTube account have now been closed, but I will try to find the video that he uploaded and include it in this video if it's possible. Noah also failed to get through to a crisis helpline before Sunday's attack at the field shopping mall. He had called the line, but since it was summer, they closed already at 2 and the people in line ended up never getting through, and this is actually what happened to Noah. The firearms that Noah used in this shooting and post within the videos were not owned by him and he did not have the required firearms license. They were legally owned by a person who was a member of a sports shooting club and was living in the same household as him. And Denmark actually has some of the strictest gun laws in Europe, with licenses to own firearms usually only available for hunting or sports shooting, following background checks and with an almost total ban on automatic weapons. It's also strictly prohibited to carry a firearm in public. So basically guns can be bought by adults in Denmark, but there are requirements to do so. So a court hearing with Noah Espensen was held on the 4th of July 2022, so the day after the shooting. The doors were closed and the press actually were asked to leave the courtroom before knowing how Noah responded to the charges. The prosecutor stated that the charge involved three murders, seven attempted murders, and illegal possession of weapons. He pleaded not guilty on a reason of insanity, and after carrying out Denmark's worst mass shooting, he was remanded to a closed psychiatric unit. The investigation showed that disturbing texts were found, but I was unable to find more information about what these texts were. When searching Noah's home, things were found that indicated that an attack was planned, but this was not necessarily an attack in Fields Shopping Mall. The police also found documents in which Noah had written about where you could hit your victims, for example on the body or in the head, and that you should keep an eye out for people hiding. He had also written how you could move furniture to protect yourself and create your own kill zone. He had also bought a bulletproof vest that he was wearing when he was arrested. Shortly after his arrest, Noah told the police that he had actually planned to be killed by the police. He also explained that his mind was balancing between a good side and a bad side. For a half year, he had tried to get help for balancing this good and bad side. He was very cooperative with professionals and he had told them about his darkest thoughts, even the ones about mass murder and murder. But many times when he had been seeking help, he had also been rejected and been sent home again. In the time leading up to the shooting, his antipsychotic medication was also drastically reduced. Along the way, there were therapists who believed that this situation could develop dangerously, while others believed that he would never act on it. But it did seem like Noah had an inspiration for the shooting. Behind the screen in his room in Denmark, Noah started hearing a voice from the dead. This voice actually belonged to Randy Stair, a young mentally ill man from Pennsylvania. On the 8th of June 2017, after closing time, he barricaded the exits of the supermarket where he worked. He then fired 59 shots with his two shotguns, killing three colleagues before taking his own life. 
For a year leading up to the supermarket massacre, Stair had shared a series of videos on his YouTube profile under the username Andrew Blaze. Noah wrote in his notebook that Andrew Blaze inspired him, but there was one important factor that separated the two of them. Randy Stair never sought any type of psychiatric help while Noah was actually seeking help and actually getting treatments in the psychiatric healthcare system. Shortly before the shooting, the doctors assessed Noah to no longer be psychotic and he was therefore drastically reduced in antipsychotic medication. He continued to show up for the talks and he last spoke with the doctor only a few days before the shooting. In Noah's home, a USB stick was found which contained a video that never actually made it onto the internet. On this video, he talked about how much he hated the world and how he considered himself a psychopath. He later explained that he wanted the next thing to happen to be the end of it all. According to the police, the victims seemed to be random, so there was no particular group targeted or the shooter was not motivated by gender or anything else. According to the police, the shooting was not an act of terrorism. But some sources on the internet stated that Noah was targeting Muslims as he disliked Muslims, but since I don't have any information about the victims, I can't tell if they were Muslims or not. It's also unsure if this information is actually accurate. The Swedish victim Sandra that I talked about before believes that his mental health was the reason behind the shooting and she has stated that it's also easier for her to believe that she was picked at random instead of wondering why he picked her. I also think that his mental health issues could have been a part of the shooting, especially since he had tried to get help on the day of the shooting but was rejected. One thing that interests me though is that he was inspired by another shooter and he also described himself as having a dark side and being a psychopath. So I feel like it's also important to not only blame mental health because there are a lot of people who suffer from schizophrenia who would never go on to do something like this. So I personally believe that his mental health was a part of it and especially if he had some kind of psychosis that day but I do also believe that he had a dark side that possibly affected his actions that day. I also want to point out that even if it is one of my biggest interests, I'm not a psychologist, so this is just pure speculation from my side. Anyway, the attack happened in the end of the week, in which Denmark hosted the first three stages of Tour de France cycle race, and in the last part of the race, a minute of silence was held for the victims. The British singer Harry Styles also cancelled his concert at the Royal Arena, scheduled later that evening. He wrote on his Twitter, I'm heartbroken along with the people of Copenhagen. I adore this city. The people are so warm and full of love. I'm devastated for the victims, their families and everyone hurting. I'm sorry we couldn't be together. Please look after each other. The attack was actually the worst in Denmark since 2016 and was therefore a huge deal. There have also been changes in the psychiatric system after this incident, but the psychiatric system is however under a lot of pressure with too many clients and too little professionals. From what I understood, Noah Espensen is still in psychiatric care to this day, but I actually could not find any updates about this, so I'm unsure about this as well but I do hope that him and all the others in need get the help that they need so that these kind of things don't happen again. But that's all that I have for this case today, and I'm really interested in knowing what you think. Do you think that it was only mental health issues, or do you also think that there was other reasons for what he did? It's really interesting for me to read the comments, so I would be really happy if you just leave a comment about your opinion. But I will wrap up the video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I will see you in my next case. Goodbye, everyone.